Hello there, good tidings, and welcome to the Brave Wilderness Holiday Special. I know we all have our list of wishes, so this year we've decided to make your wishes come true in the form of cute and cuddly animals that are perfect for the holiday season. What's that? You're ready for a story? <laughs> you read my mind. Oh look, here's one of my favorites. The 12 Animals of Christmas. Mmm, <sighs> that is some mighty fine emu eggnog. Shall we begin? <clears throat> On the first day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me one feisty pine marten in a not so festive pine tree. I'm gonna make a reach for, and I'm gonna be as gentle as possible so I don't risk taking a bite. Got her. Woo! Now the real challenge, getting back down. All right, here we go, ready, I'm jumping down. Oh, look at her. How beautiful is that little mucilid? And one of the coolest features about the pine marten is they're the only member of the weasel family with semi-retractable claws. And that's how these crazy little slinkies can jump all over in the tree branches up there. Now it's very rare that you would ever see a pine marten on the ground. They live arboreal lives. They spend most of their time up there hunting for squirrels, which is their primary source of food. And what they will do is chase squirrels through the trees, lunge, actually can grab them out of midair, and then they want to bite to the back of the neck. And you see those long little canine teeth there are perfect for inflicting that death wound. And then of course, they have their meal. On the second day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me one tiny Mexican hairy dwarf porcupine who loves countless tiny treats. This is my little buddy named Bud. Now, Bud, let me see if I can give him some avocado. This is his absolute favorite. Is an arboreal species, which means that he sticks to the trees. He's also nocturnal, which means that he's out at night. This is such a unique animal, and Bud is a baby. So he will grow to be quite a bit bigger. They can grow to be about five and a half pounds, not as big as the North American porcupine, but this is the one species of porcupine that is very common here in Costa Rica. One of the most interesting features, come over here, look at that tail. Have you ever seen a porcupine with a long tail like that? That is a prehensile tail, which allows this porcupine to be up in the treetops and he can actually wrap this around a branch and hang upside down if he's eating food. Oh, and now he found the peanut. This is great, so you're getting kind of the full look at this animal. On the third day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me one stinky little skunk who I really hope does not spray me. Skunk coming in. Oh, look at you. Oh. 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 oh, oh, coming right for the camera. And you know, kind of have a bit of a warning there, guys. Oh, um, that tail is up. up. Oh Just no, Mario, you're in the up. line of fire right now, buddy. Good morning. Good morning, Jungle, how are you? This is Jungle, and she is a striped hog-nosed skunk. Oh boy. I, got, I just feel like I need to put my hands up when the butt is just like that. <laughs> and that's not gonna do you any good. <laughs> they have such incredible personalities. All members of the Musselid family are curious, they are playful. You can see she's just bounding around, having a great time this morning, and you never know what she's gonna do next. <laughs> Jungle. On the fourth day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me a friendly little box turtle who was unsafely playing in the street. Watch out, buddy. Here comes a Jeep. Buddy, you are right in the middle of the road. This is the most dangerous spot that a turtle could possibly be hanging out. It's headed this direction towards the woods. Here come cars, let's get over here. This is probably the one to do a presentation with. Look at this, not even tucking into his shell. What a brave little turtle. Now, if you were to ask me, what is the field guide perfect specimen when it comes to the Eastern box turtle? This one, without question, would be it. Now you may be asking yourself, well Coyote, how do you know that this is a male box turtle? The males actually have some very distinct features. First of all, their eyes are oftentimes very red in coloration. So go ahead and zoom in there on the eyes of that turtle. You see how beautiful they are. 
bright red, and then the forelimbs, which are the front legs, are often very vibrant. Look at that bright orange coloration. Such a proud and handsome turtle. On the fifth day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me a big friendly smooch from a moose who got moose slobber all over me. Sheesh. Shove it in the mouth, like shove it in the mouth, shove it in the mouth. Kiss her, kiss her, kiss her. You gotta kiss her in the nose. All right, Come try on. it again. Kiss. See, now I'm talking to her. Now it's not exactly a juicer. You gotta go a little bit slower. Oh, I see that. Here, try it, try it one this way. She likes it in the teeth. Don't let her pull your teeth out, though. Out of my mouth? Yeah, she'll pull your teeth out if you got use that when she gets a little bit. There you go. That's perfect. Do it again. That is nose to nose with the Get in the there, get in there. Her neck is only so long. Oh, I got moose slobber all That's over all my right. lip. It's all organic. You guys gotta try Go this. Can the, can the crew try yeah, this? I don't know, but gotta get closer. <laughs> One more. There oh. we go. <sighs> no, we gotta try that again. Oh, I got moose slobber more carrots all over organic. my face. Oh. You guys wanna know what moose slobber tastes like? Oh, it's salty. Woo, I've never kissed any animal this many times in a row. That's for sure, right? This many carrots on it. On the sixth day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me an itty bitty squirrel who drank a gallon of milk out of an eyedropper before he could even see. On the seventh day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me a spring-loaded ocelot who jumped and pounced and chomped me with its needle-sharp teeth. Youch! Whoa! That's a wild ocelot. And she's right here at my feet. Look at that. How cool is that? This is a wild cat. However, she is used to humans. She hangs out on this trail. We were told if you walk this trail at night, there's a good chance that you will come across her. Let's see, what else do I maybe have for you to play with? Maybe just the pack itself. Look at that. Oh yeah. Can we wrestle with the pack? Wrestle with the pack? Huh? Get it, get it. Look at that coloration. Now this cat blends so perfectly into its environment. All this cryptic patterning allows them to stay hidden in the shadows as they're moving through all of this foliage. Come here, you come here for a second. I'm just gonna hold on to you and, and, and take the risk of a bite, oh, and a scratch, a paw to the face, a paw to the face. <laughs> How about a little belly rub? Yeah, I hear you talking. You got that pack? Can you see your face? Oh, look at that. On the eighth day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me a grumpy little black bear who was full of attitude because I ran out of his favorite treats. Now black bears come in a variety of colors. Of course, this one is black, but you can see he's got some lighter brown fur on his back there. And all these tufts that you see puffing up, that's his summer coat blowing out and the winter coat getting ready to come in. And the black version of the black bear always has a tannish looking muzzle. You can see on Bucky here, that distinct coloration is already starting to grow in. A black bear is the smallest species of bear here in the United States and in North America. Trumped, of course, by the grizzly and then up north, the polar bear. One interesting difference between black bears and grizzly bears is that grizzlies have this famous hump on their backs. Now, black bears don't have that. Oftentimes, people mistake the cinnamon version or the brown version of the black bear for a grizzly. Now, black bears don't get as big as grizzly bears, and the quickest way to be able to identify a brown black bear is to look for that hump on the back. No hump, it's not a grizzly. Hmm. On the ninth day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me the world's cutest baby sloth, famously known as B-Rad, and his adorable baby sloth, Squeaks. Now, B-Rad is a baby three-toed sloth. Yeah, wanna give me a high three? Hi, three. There you go. What's really interesting about these creatures is they're called three-toed sloths, but actually the front feet are the fingers. Now, they use these three claws to help them climb around in the treetops. This is an arboreal species. He looks like a little Yeti. That's a hat. You probably have never seen a cowboy hat before. He's like, hmm, maybe I should climb up here, but I don't think we're gonna let you go up there, little buddy. Why don't you stay down here on your stuffed sloth? I love the gray and whitish coloration of the fur and that very distinct raccoon looking mask on the face. 
Now, baby sloths make a really interesting noise, and B-Rad's not making it, but they do go. I'm talking to you. I can speak sloth. Yeah. On the 10th day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me a baby fox in Alaska who thought taking my stinky sock would be an oh-so-funny treat. It is very, very difficult to hold on to this baby fox because she wants to run around in the enclosure. So one tactic I used with the ocelot was to take my sock off and get its attention with that. Kick, 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 kick. Loop it. Here we go, she's got her attention. Look at that. Oh, sock is good. Get, it. Get that sock. Now, if I was one of her litter mates and I found something out there in the wild, like a hunter who left a sock behind, this would be a great toy to play with. This fox is incredibly playful, and at this age, that's natural, but even adult foxes, you'll see running around out in fields, prancing, hopping, playing fun games. Anything that she can potentially get her claws and her teeth on is fair game. On the 11th day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me an orphaned baby otter who melted hearts like chocolate in a sun-baked street. These rhymes are getting tough, you know. Look at how cute that baby otter is. Now, otters, as we know, are related to skunks, weasels, wolverines, and mink. And he actually really looks a lot like a mink, especially with this coat. Now, they are aquatic predators, and when I touch his fur, give me your little guy. Come here, hey, hey. Can you, can you hang out for a second while we get these lines? Just for a second, and then you can go explore. Let me see that bottle of milk. Let's see if he's hungry. Come here, little guy, come here. Now, this baby river otter was recently orphaned, and the wildlife sanctuary that we're working with right now has taken him in and is tending to him. Hopefully, he will be able to be released back into the wild, but if not, he's gonna have a very comfortable life here at the sanctuary. They are opportunistic feeders. A little one like this would be drinking milk, but when he gets bigger, he's gonna wanna be eating fish, snakes, frogs, anything that can find its way into that mouth is fair game. Oh, still thirsty? One more? There you go. And on the 12th day of Christmas, Brave Wilderness gave to me the absolute perfect snuggle session with a baby reindeer that was so cute, all you could say was eee! Now, this is a baby reindeer. In the wild, this is more known as a caribou, but a semi-domesticated caribou is properly referred to as a reindeer. These animals have been used to pull sleighs up in the north, and of course, to control a sleigh, you need to have reins, hence the name reindeer. And you see right now Blitzen's just feasting away on this fireweed. A baby like this needs to consume a ton of food. They grow rather quickly, and you can see even at this age, he's already has his antlers growing in, and they're so soft right now, just covered in this fluffy velvet. Yeah, he's had a lot of plants to eat already this morning, and he's starting to get a little sleepy. Almost time for his nap, and like most babies, he spends a lot of time during the day resting, this is really comforting to him right now. Just a little scratch on the side of the neck. Oof. You gotta watch your eyes next to those antlers though. Fortunately, they're still pretty dull, so you take a hit in the face and I'm gonna be okay. The end. Wasn't that just a glorious Jingle Bell of a story? <laughs> What's that? Which one was my favorite? Oh goodness, I think it's pretty tough to tell. I love them all. But which one was your favorite? Write in the comments section below and tell us which animal you wish could spend the holiday season with your family. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild, and happy holidays from everyone at Brave Wilderness. Is that, is that too, too weird and creepy? No, I think it's probably too <laughs> okay. random.